Welcome to the Dreamlands. We are back in the deserts of Karak. This time we are going to be checking out a big old 3v3 on the classic map Kartoba. Been quite a while since I cast a 3v3 and this one looks to be pretty darn good. A few old school solid players as well as a few players that are going to make their debut on the channel. Uh, and it's on definitely the best 3v3 map in the pool. It's pretty decent players all around, so let's uh, reveal all, pop this off. We will do player introductions. You guys know the routine, and then we will jump into the game. I just got to see who all these players are. I haven't watched this replay yet, um, so that's how it is. All right, so let's get our bearings here. We are going to be on the, well, we'll call this the north side, the north side of Kartoba. So spawning on the north side of the map, Team 1. First up, right spawn, making their debut on the channel. It is going to be Kitsune playing as the Soban. This is a player that I have seen around the Discord uh, quite frequently. I have never seen them play, uh, so I know nothing about them. But uh, we will find out soon enough what kind of plays they are going to bring to the table in this match. Taking up the middle spawn, I don't even have to look to see who this is. The distinct pink on pink, it is going to be Empty Soul. Playing as the Galcian, a player you guys are all familiar with by this point. Really, a really solid player. Uh, somebody who always comes up with very interesting plays. That's one thing about Empty Soul, is he always comes up with some rather unusual, unconventional, and very, very interesting players. Solid micro, and, and a very, very strong player overall. Left Spawn, playing as the Coalition in the red and black. It is going to be Joran. This is a player that um, was around in the early days, was very, very strong player, uh, and then kind of disappeared off the radar for quite some time and has just returned to the game. So it should be pretty darn interesting to see uh, what sort of play Joran brings. I can't really remember his style, to be honest with you. Um, the few times that I played against him in the Artifact Cup, he was super aggressive, going for early turret harass as well as LAV pressure, um, but a pretty solid player. Trained with Trend for a long time, so definitely has the chops for the game. There we have Team 1. I better do this pretty quickly here. We are going to have Tomcat, Ritz, and Musa. All right, so Team 2 spawning on the south side. Right spawn. It is going to be Tomcat Zeno. Once again, a player who's appeared in a number of videos recently for both Remastered as well as Deserts of Karak. Pretty darn strong player. Definitely a little more experienced in Homeworld Remastered than Deserts of Karak, but likes to play his Knef and has a solid Knef game at that. Middle spawn in the red and black as well. Playing the Coalition, we have also making their debut on the channel, Moritz. This is a player I know nothing about at all. Um, so, total mystery to me. We will see what sort of skill level they're at and what kind of plays they bring to the table in this 3v3. Spawning on the left spawn for Team 2, it is going to be Musa once again. If you've been following this game or this channel since the early days, you will be familiar with this player. A good friend of mine, a really cool guy, and a solid, more macro-focused coalition player. So there we have it. Let's see what's going on on the map. We do have Musa grabbing the first artifact of the game, very, very close to dumping it for Team 2. Team 1, we've got Kitsune as well as Empty Soul, both with base runners have grabbed their artifacts and are delivering them. We do have a pretty decent swarm of sand skimmers from Empty Soul as well as LAVs from Kitsune coming out for some harassment on Tom's base runner. He's going to do a pretty nice move here, pop the smoke, spawn a blast drone. Oh, these guys have to be so careful. Oh, we have upgrades? Yeah, we do. So some early armor upgrades for the sand skimmers. Uh, that's going to allow them to survive that blast drone hit shockingly. Uh, maybe it was also part of their radius. They were pretty far away from it. But quick assault ships from Tomcat on the back of that blast drone. Quick AAVs for Moritz. Let's check out builds. Do we have production cruiser refinery mode yet? I suspect that we do because we have the production cruiser uh, in place to receive those minerals. So Tomcat going for a fast expand. Moritz going fast expand with support cruiser on the field as well as Musa. Musa looks like he's actually double expanding, super greedy, was able to dunk that one artifact, and it looks like Team 1 was able to dunk their two artifacts, so taking it up two to one. What sort of builds do we have here for Kitsune? We do have a support cruiser on the field on the back of that LAV harass. Looks like support cru or production cruiser refinery mode on the back of that skimmer harass for 
Um, Empty Soul and oh boy, Joran with double production cruiser. So super greedy build as well. So it looks like Team 2 opted to go for a little bit more econ into some heavy tech. So the early advantage goes to Team... Pardon me, that's Team 2. All right, so Kitsune, Empty Soul, and Joran are Team 2, dunking two artifacts and getting some nice early harass in. Team 1, though, taking a little bit of an economic lead as well as a tech lead. We do have a single assault ship, two assault ships, three assault ships, as well as a number of AAVs pushing out for a nice counterattack. Kitsune's got a couple AAVs on the field as well with some nice armed logistics modules here. A little bit too far forward. My opinion you want to keep them back a little bit especially in the early game when they are not all that powerful they can get sniped pretty easily as you can see here Enemy on so empty soul and kitsune holding down the right side of the field a second production cruiser on the field now for empty soul a single aav and some rail guns we're gonna have a little bit of a skirmish between joran oh, let me get rid of this here between Joran and Musa. Musa pushing forward with some upgraded AAVs, a single armor upgrade for them, as well as backing up with some railguns. So kind of a mirrored build here, uh, except Musa is still long hauling from his second. Gonna try and get a front line established with his carrier at his third, long haul from his second until he can get some, uh, some time to produce another production cruiser. Joran letting these AAVs just drive right by him uh, that is not a good idea. Ooh, pardon me. Needs to get something on top of these fast, or these will chew through all of his resourcing. Musa just ignoring his entire army and swinging wide, going for his main. Gotta watch out for this with Coalition players big time. They, a lot of them like to do this, and you gotta be careful. Because uh, this can just wreak havoc, as we're gonna see here. So let me take a quick peek on what's happening on the other side of the game. Wide flank of assault ships from Tomcat. I'm going to try and get around Kitsune's front line. Empty Soul bringing skimmers back. That's not going to really help too, too much. Maybe serve as a distraction. Uh, Musa is going to focus the support cruiser, and it is going to go down. That's going to be a pretty big hit to Joran's economy. Uh, Joran should have taken these two AAVs here, moved them forward, and just smoked this. If you don't have forces in position to defend against this, and you're playing Coalition or Soban, just put smoke right on top of your main here and you can keep this from happening. You're going to keep bleeding out a number of salvagers as well. Musa just going to throw these AAVs away uh, and do as much economic damage as possible. Empty going to bring his carrier back now that he has a third production cruiser on the field. And Kitsune holding the line still on two bases. Empty on three, Joran on three. Uh, and pretty much all of Team 1 on 3. No other artifacts yet, and it looks like we are transitioning out of the hectic early game and into a more macro-centric game. But we got Moritz with some AAVs, LAVs, and railguns. Uh, Tomcat Zeno, by the looks of it, with sand skimmers and assault ships. And Musa finally getting that second production cruiser on the field and holding the line against Duran's counterattack. Duran going to try and snipe down some of these rails. Currently, they're targeting the AAV, which is the wrong target. A little bit of miss micro there. He wants to get on top of these rail guns. Going to try and do what Musa did to him and just ignore his entire army. Musa is on point, though, with his micro. Going to just send all of those AAVs to track down and destroy those LAVs while his carrier and railguns hold the front line, picking up a second artifact to try and tie it up for a 2-2. Duran with some nice positioning over here. What has he got? Um, oh, this is Empty Soul with a production cruiser. A turret goes down for Musa, I presume. Yep, as well. A second turret from Moritz, who's also grabbed an artifact. Looks like they want to make a play here and try and get a lead. And Empty Soul is going to be doing something pretty cool here. Uh, it looks like he has gone from a really greedy opener with some heavy skimmer harass into a carrier power build, which can be super annoying to deal with uh, as the Galcian, because their carrier can just be so fast. You can see he's going to clean up both of these turrets in short order here. And still a standoff between Joran and Musa. Both similar compositions, just massing AVs and railguns using their carriers on the front line defensively. Duran is on the losing end of that fight, though, currently. 
And it looks like we've got a siege cruiser on the field. So tech directly into siege cruiser on the back of that. Which is going to spell a big, big problem for Musa on this side. Musa does have the macro advantage over Duran. Duran's bleeding out units here, sending them piecemeal into the fight. Not something you want to do. Get some smoke up on the front line, pull your units back, and kind of mass up right here if you can. Ooh, this barrage is going to be absolutely devastating. Putting on some serious hurt, but some nice micro actually. Musa dodged the majority of that damage, didn't even lose a single unit, so. Really nice response from him. Let's check the other side of the map real quick. Oh god, we've got a big fight going on on this side. Skirmish between Kitsune, uh, Empty Soul, and um, Tomcat. Tomcat with a uh, siege cruiser on the field. This must be Moritz. Yeah, Moritz has some railguns coming over to support. Those have been outflanked, though, by some sand skimmers from Empty and are currently being pushed back. Looks like Empty's focus is elsewhere because we do have some Miss Micro as well. And the first. Kanef Siege Cruiser Barrage, just going to blind fire right on top of the carrier here, hoping to catch some units, and that is not going to be the case. What do we got for Kitsune? Mass AAV. Alright, so Kitsune with Mass AAV, empty with skimmers and Siege Cruisers and a power carrier. Joran with Mass LAV, AAV, and Railgun. Uh, Musa. Mass AAV and Railgun. Moritz looks like he is sticking still with LAVs, AAVs, and Railguns as well. Oh lord, we've got a battle cruiser on the field. Two battle cruisers even. Interesting play. So Moritz teching directly to battle cruisers on the back of your standard uh, coalition macro build, which is pretty damn cool. If he can get these things into a good position, he can swing the game in a big way. Uh, they're pretty far away from any of the action, though, so that's going to take a while. Duran still trying to push back. Musa. Musa has a pretty fearsome army here. What do we got for upgrades? Do you have uh, two armor upgrades by the looks of it? Or was that a Sunder on there? 14 armor is not a standard number. Maybe it is. So it looks like Kitsune is on his own, or she, whatever that is, um, to try and fend off the aggression of Tomcat Zeno on this side of the map. Still not able to take a third, or it looks like uh, Kitsune did take their third, but was pushed off by um, Tomcat, and Tomcat now has a couple of assault ships, a couple of siege cruisers, and some interceptors. So Kitsune is in a lot of trouble being pushed off and about to be doubled, as a matter of fact, because Moritz is pushing forward with uh, his carrier, backed up by a few railguns, and it looks like his entire army, as a matter of fact, swinging wide, so doubling that side, forcing Empty to come back. Still a standoff between Musa and Duran. These two players look to be pretty evenly um, skilled, or evenly, uh, yeah, evenly skilled here. We do have some artillery cruisers from Musa, whose macro is on point, although he is currently being outflanked in a big way. Who is this? Empty Soul. Oh god, a beautiful flank from Empty Soul. Gonna come right through the back door, clean up Musa's main, and assault his second. Musa down to two resource locations now. Empty doing a pretty nice job of taking the heat off Duran, and Duran is going to use that opportunity to push forward with enormous force. Musa's carrier might actually go down here if he's not careful. There are a huge number of railguns as well as uh, LAVs and AAVs pushing forward in a big way. Oh, Musa is in bad trouble now. This giant force of um, Durans is even backed up by two production cruisers on the front line, spewing out units for Empty Soul as well as two siege cruisers. Oh god, Musa is in so much trouble right now. He has been forced off, flanked out, his main was cleaned up, and surrounded and forced off. He is in full retreat now. We do have a back door coming from Moritz, which is going to get cleaned up by Empty Soul. Empty Soul's carrier moved off to the right side of the map. I probably missed a giant battle, I do apologize for that. Uh, sometimes you just can't keep up in a 3v3 because there are battles everywhere all the time. Uh, and it looks like Kitsune was forced off the third, forced off the second even, and is consolidating 
uh, their main position. We do have battle cruisers on the field for Katsune as well. One of them took an absolute beating, but it looks like the majority of the forces of Katsune as well as Moritz and Tomcat were all cleaned up. I must have missed a huge battle on the side. Good grief, I do apologize. We do have one battle cruiser from Moritz as well as a battle cruiser or two. Two by the looks of it for um, Kitsune. Empty soul just bouncing back and forth. All right, team two. Team one was able to dunk an artifact at some point. I did miss that as well, looking at all this beautiful combat. Uh, Musa is in a huge amount of trouble. His entire army is being decimated. He's been forced off his second and third, back to his main. So kind of mirroring what happened on the other side of the map, actually, interestingly enough. But Empty Soul is playing mid in the way that you should play mid, popping back and forth from side to side, supporting the combat where he is needed. And I like how he's splitting his forces, his carrier and his skimmers on this side, and his artillery uh, siege cruisers on that side. Oh, we've got a nuke coming out from Empty. Oh, beautiful nuke placement right on top of this entire railgun blob. Oh, gonna clean up so many units. Oh, Moritz does not want to do this. This is a bad choice. Oh, God. I guess he was in a pretty tough spot. He was getting nuked here and had to move out of the way and moved right into the line of fire of a couple of Soban battlecruisers, which you don't want to do. This game is far from over. We are tied up at 2-2 apiece in terms of artifacts. Somehow, Joran is not pushing his advantage. I guess there are too many units on the field here. What do we got? Do you have a siege cruiser back there, did that say? We do. Oh, so it looks like Tomcat came around with some of his forces to support Musa and prevent him from dying. Musa's carrier is flaming, billowing smoke. It is on fire. Below half health, but we do have some heavy railguns as well as some siege cruisers from Tomcat backing up. Uh, Musa's carrier. Musa going to try and push forward with this handful of units. Not a good idea. Look at the size of Joran's army. This is kind of a strange position, though, for uh, Empty Soul. He must feel pretty safe with Joran's army here. Joran moving his carrier up. Look at this death ball, man. That is a terrifying... 26 railguns! Good lord! A powered carrier and a bunch of AAVs. We do have another flank coming in from Empty Soul. Good god, this game is pretty damn awesome. Do you have strike fighters in the air? Is that Musa or is that... Uh, that's Moritz. Moritz with a nice mixed composition here. He's got battle cruisers, strike fighters, LAVs, AAVs, and rail guns. How much of his army is left? I don't know. We have another nuke coming out from Empty Soul. Going to try and clean up this battle cruiser. Oh, dangerously close to doing so, but with supporting fire from the two Soulbind battle cruisers, that is going to get cleaned up. Empty going to unleash a nice nuke and then dodge the... Uh, Barrage from the siege cruisers. More strike fighters by the looks of it. This has to be uh, Kitsune. So nice mixed composition for Kitsune as well. Moritz took a beating there. Oh my god, look at this fighting. This is why 3v3 are so awesome. A little bit more difficult to cast, especially on this map, but I will do my best to keep my eye on all of the action as things unfold. This is still anybody's game though. I mean, Joran is going to be a massive problem for Musa to deal with. Musa's carrier needs to be repaired in a very, very big way. He needs to get this thing back and get some support cruisers on it. Uh, he has a ton of power as well. What he needs to do is put max power. There he goes into reactive armor. Get that healing up. And it looks like Joran is closing in, though. Going to try and position around and get this high ground spot here for those railguns. Musa with a pretty nice split on his forces being supported as well by Tomcat with a pretty nice fan of units behind Musa's carrier. Joran is coming in. He does not have a nuke. He has a reasonable amount of power. Um, not too, too much. Most of it in range, though. Oh, that big barrage from Tomcat right on top of Joran's forces. Some beautiful smoke going to cut off line of sight to these railguns. Very nice, and try and swing around this terrain. Beautiful use of smoke, cutting off the one section that your units can see through. Oh, but Joran's in a tough spot now. He's kind of forced himself in here, and he can't retreat. All of his units are pretty damaged, and his carrier has started taking damage as well. What's going on on this side? Not too much. Moritz has been forced into retreat. Tomcat's forced into retreat. Kitsune able to take 
uh, the second resource location as well. But Joran is unstoppable on this side of the map. Just that insane coalition death ball. No anti-air though uh, that I can see, which is going to be a big, big problem. The only anti-air we have are these two production cruisers from Empty Soul. Uh, so some nice airstrikes coming in from Tomcat, going to clean up some of those forces. Moose's entire army looks like it was mostly cleaned up. Going to retreat with these AAVs, retreat with the carrier. Joran wants Moose's carrier in a bad way, but he is just brute forcing his way in here, and he's going to start eating railgun fire as well as barrages from these Knef sea cruisers and heavy rails. Oh lord, a cruise missile. Oh, direct hit onto Moose's carrier, trying to take Moose out. He is going to pay a huge cost, though, moving all of his units right into the barrages as well as the railgun fire. Moose is in full retreat at this point, however. His entire army has been wiped out, and Joran is in hot pursuit. More airstrikes on this side of the map, a gunship from Moritz as well. More siege cruisers, more battle cruisers. Looks like Kitsune is down to just battle cruisers and AAVs. We've got some nice base runner spam from Empty Soul healing up his units. And it looks like it's just skimmers and siege cruisers here. Still 2-2. In terms of artifacts, Joran is just pushing through here. Is he building more units as he goes? I hope he is. Did his entire economy get cleaned up or something? No, he is still on 3 base. Empty still on 3 base. Kitsune on 2. Usa on none. Oh god, and Tomcat Zeno is in full retreat as well. Joran just brute forcing his way across this entire side of the map. He's now behind enemy lines. Oh man, Team 1 is in a really, really tough spot here. Moritz is basically surrounded. Uh, and he's got high ground, basically high ground positions on all sides, so that is a dangerous spot to be in. He needs to get out through this path if he can. Oh, but he can't. There are siege cruisers as well as heavy railguns. Oh no, these are supporting him. Good, good, good. So if these units can support and clear the path, Moritz can get out of there. He does not want to go towards the enemy. He wants to go away from the enemy. Oh, but they're just going to brute force, and Empty is going to nuke the retreat path for Moritz. Oh, gorgeous nuke. Moritz is going to actually escape the brunt of it with his carrier, but we have a cruise missile as well. Oh, whoa. How the hell did that miss? What? Was that a bug? That was like a direct hit, but I think it hit inside the hill. Oh my god, that was really, really weird. That's lucky for Moritz. He's in full retreat. Did Musa go down? I think, no, Musa went all the way to the other side of the map, so none of the players have been killed yet, but it looks like Moritz is in deep, deep shit. Duran is pushing forward, but he is coming under fire now from all of the heavy railguns and siege cruisers. Oh god, which carrier is going to die first? Oh, it's so close. Oh, Duran taking pretty much the brute force of the entire army of all players on Team 1, and he is going to go down. Joran. oh man, what a crazy death. Oh god, it just came... It, what was it? 3 to 1? Kitsune is gone? Okay, so it looks like... Nope, Kitsune is here. Alright, so it's 3 to 2 now. Empty Soul and Kitsune versus uh, Musa... Tomcat and Moritz. Moritz somehow still in the game, desperately building units. Even an Honor Guard cruiser now on the field for uh, Tomcat Zeno. Good grief, it is pretty difficult to keep up with all of what's going on. Oh, some savage siege cruiser barrages right on top of this entire army. Beautifully placed. Moritz wants to get his carrier the hell out of there because a couple of railgun shots and it's toast. Oh, this is not a place you want to go with your skimmers. Jesus Christ, they are going to get <laughs> just crapped on by all of these siege cruisers. Oh my lord, I can't even comment on everything that's going on. We've got airstrikes, we've got artillery barrages, we've got massive flanks from strike craft, we've got honor guard cruisers, railguns, AAVs, you name it. Pretty much every unit in the game going toe-to-toe -to -toe in a giant cataclysmic battle. That nuke from empty going to drive Moritz off. 
What have we got going on here? All station on the move. NF carrier inbound. Oh my god. I th oh, it's so hard to make this call. We got five power and missiles? No. Oh, we have almost no power, actually, for Tomcat, so that's pretty bad. He wants to get some power. He does have a pretty decent air force, a ton of siege cruisers, uh, and he does have some support from both allies with a little bit of units, but Tomcat is the only one who's got a pretty fearsome army at this point in the game, and he is getting surrounded. What have we got here? A oh, Lord, look at this. This is a beautiful sight right here. Four Soban battlecruisers pushing forward. This is going to be a savage battle versus three Kanef siege cruisers. One of the siege cruisers go down. This is a battle that these battlecruisers can definitely win. One battlecruiser does go down though. And we've got an honor guard cruiser on the top of the hill. Oh, it is gonna start taking brutal fire from all of these Soban battlecruisers. Oh, backed up as they are by some nice base runner spam from Empty Soul, so he can re repair all of these units, and he needs to do that right away because this one battle cruiser is super, super wounded. Oh, and now it's backed up by a couple of siege cruisers from Empty Soul, so this whole blob is going to eat artillery fire. Beautiful move from Tomcat, moving these units back behind that hill. Some base runner heal spam from Empty Soul going to keep these units on the field. What a nice battle here. A big flank as well from Sand Skimmers from Empty Soul. Who is this? Moritz is on the run. He's got nothing really on the field. He's going to try and set up his economy as well. So basically we have Musa's carrier and Moritz's carrier. Uh, but neither of those players have units. Tomcat is holding it down with this one Honor Guard cruiser. Two Siege cruisers and just a handful of heavy rail guns. Five of them. Two Honor Guard cruisers now. So he does have a pretty decent army. Uh, not much economy though as Team 2 just closes the gap around the remnants of Team 1. We have a big push now, Empty Soul and Kitsune pushing with their carriers. They want to take Tomcat out by the looks of it. And they're going to go for it. Full power being shunted into weapons for Empty Soul. Power being shunted into weapons as well for Kitsune. They're going to try and focus down Empty's carrier. Musa's carrier is going to come around and support with full power in weapons from the flank here. It looks like we have a good old-fashioned Deserts of Karak carrier showdown. Oh, yeah. There are few things in the world I love more than this, to tell you the truth. Oh, that nuke right on top. And uh, Musa is just going to drive through the nuke. Oh, man. Brutal. But Kitsune, with some nice play, was able to take this position. What he wants to do is get his battle cruisers on top of this hill. Uh, get those battle cruisers up here, and a couple shots, and you will be able to take down any of these carriers. Supported even as they are by these uh, siege cruisers and this carrier. This high ground spot, even push them forward. Try and get up on top of this hill here. Never underestimate the power of high ground. Oh god, is that a cruise missile? Coming from downtown from Moritz. Oof, not gonna be enough to close the deal though. Empty gonna start tanking some damage here with his carrier. Try and get these units out of position. They're in a good spot though, if he can wait until he's got a nuke, and he's gonna have a nuke very, very soon. These units are just going to keep eating siege cruiser barrages. We're actually going to run the clock, I think, here. This is tied up at 2-2. No players grabbing artifacts. All that either team would need is one artifact to close out the game. But I don't think there's... I mean, Empty could grab three artifacts and win the game right now. Like, just take three of these base runners, grab three artifacts, and dunk them because your extraction zone is right here. No reason not to do that. Unless for some reason they just want to kill the other players. It'll be pretty hard for Team 1 to come back out of this because Musa and Moritz have no economy uh, and they have no units. They're basically just... They have a float? Let's look at resources here. Musa has not enough CUs for a nuke. <clears throat> Moritz has not enough CUs for a nuke. Uh, the And... Actually, Tomcat is desperately out of resources, so it's a ticking clock, in my opinion, for Team 1. There's that nuke for Empty. 
We're going to clean up perhaps what's left of Tomcat's economy. Put some damage out onto his carrier. What is going on? Moritz and Musa are both on the run. They can't build anything though. They can't even build a salvager. So I don't know what they're doing. They can't nuke anything. They need to be supporting uh, Tomcat who is currently got Empty Soul knocking on his front door with full power in weapons. Oh man, that is going to be really close. Is Empty Soul going to go down here? Empty Soul's carrier is badly damaged, taking tons of railgun fire from these heavy railguns and Honor Guard Cruisers he needs to get out of there, shunting power into speed to get over top of this dune. What are these? Oh man, look at all of these Soban Battle Cruisers. Musa needs to get the heck out of Dodge. So does Moritz. You don't want to go into this, man. I mean, they're desperately trying to distract uh, Kitsune and empty soul, and it's going to come at the cost of Moritz's carrier, so boom, down it goes. Musa's carrier also took an absolute beating. It is on fire. Uh, the clock is pretty much ticking at this point. Musa is going to charge, for some reason, into Soban Railgun Fire. He is going to go down momentarily. There he goes. A couple more shots, and he is toast. There we have it. Musa goes down. Wow, so Kitsune just popped two carriers in a row and now it is the last stand of Tomcat Xeno. This was a pretty pretty exciting game I have to say I enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, I missed a ton of action no doubt. Unfortunately I missed uh, Moritz Battlecruiser charge I'm pretty sure on the other side and I really wanted to see that but the combat was just so good on this left side of the map whoa that I was watching, and more important in my opinion, because of how close it was between Musa and Duran, that was going to be more game deciding than um, what was happening on the other side. Look at this. What a sight. So it is uh, Tomcat's last stand. He's going to go down here momentarily. There's nothing he can do. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did. Leave a like if you did. Hit that subscribe if you enjoy the content that you're seeing on my channel. Leave me some comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, and yeah, we will just watch the last stand of Tomcat in this gorgeous cinematic glory. I'm not sure why these players aren't just pushing. Just go close the deal. He can't kill you. Like, there is no way he can kill you. Here we go, Empty Soul is going to lead the charge, Kitsune taking up the rear, all of the battle cruisers finally cresting the hill. And this is going to be the end for Tomcat. Once that explosion hits, that'll be it guys. So, once again, I hope you enjoyed this video, I will see you for the next video.